If you've watched Libriscope for any significant amount of time, you'll know that half of what I do on this channel is games critique. To do so properly, which it's of course debatable that I do, there needs to be some standard for discussion, which elevates the reasoning of your conclusions beyond because I feel like it. Bad media critique totally exists, whether it's because the critic has ill intentions or an agenda, they feel like their thoughts are indisputable gospel, they severely lack in prerequisite information or get information wrong, or most commonly, they simply don't quite illustrate the relationship between the facts they encountered in the game and how that affected their experience. Like, it can be frustrating to hear a critic say that a game's dodge mechanic is terrible and never worked for them, but then to watch as they skate right past explaining what about it failed to function, what effect that had on the game state, and how that consequently affected their experience. Sometimes it's that blatant, as if they had better things to do than their job as a critic. Sometimes it's more that they simply couldn't find the words to illustrate it well to their audience. The point is, while our own experiences with games are just that, our own experiences, and nobody can act like those experiences aren't valid, there are still better ways to critique media, and worse ways depending on the goal of the critique. Sometimes though, I also couldn't give two shits about any of that. Sometimes I just want to play a game and enjoy it, no matter the quality of any or all of its disparate parts, let alone the whole. Calico is an example of one of those times. I don't remember exactly where Calico was first shown off. I feel like there was a trailer at like the E3 PC showcase or something like that. All I know is that while I was sitting there next to my brother, watching all the reveals like we always enjoyed doing together, I really wanted to keep an eye on Calico. It stayed in my mind until the day I finally obtained a copy just a couple of months ago after getting my new laptop. Over the next couple days, I played through it, enjoying every single moment. Calico is a really simple game. You moved to a new island where you are now in charge of a cafe. Make food, find animals, decorate, and make friends with the locals. There are shops, several different environments on the island, problems to solve, and baked goods to prepare. The characters and quests are simple, but wholesome. Very utopian in its problems. Calico is largely just a set of fetch quests with very, very little stakes. There's no way to really fail at anything, and you're all but guaranteed to make money even if you're completely broke. Just by waiting for people to stop by the cafe. There are no ways to lose money either, just spend it. Search for animals, help your friends, and do whatever pleases you within the small toolset of mechanics on offer. The game only takes like 5 hours to 100% if, like me, you still like to do that in spite of the zen vibes asking you to just chill. Most of the tasks set out before you either simply require talking to others, finding specific animals, putting a particular theme of furniture in the cafe, or making a specific food. If you happen to already have done what is asked of you, the quest basically finishes itself an instant later. More or less, every character has two tasks for you, and once you've finished them, these characters rarely come up again. Animals and furniture don't serve much gameplay purpose beyond riding larger animals for a marginal speed boost. Clothing has no mechanical value at all. Walking speeds are arguably too slow for 5 hours of running back and forth, and while the world is beautiful in some ways, it's devoid of stuff to do in others. Some places that could and should have shortcuts don't. Most recipes, being largely sweets or baked goods, require the same handful of ingredients. And there are some ingredients that I don't remember using at all after two playthroughs. Parts of the UI look great, and other parts, like the control guide, look totally uninspired and thrown together. It's extremely easy to choke on the cuteness, femininity, progressiveness, and optimism here if you're a bitter asshole who's not into any of that as well. And like, I really couldn't give less of a fuck about any of that? Why? Because I like cuteness and traditionally feminine stuff, just as much as I like cool or traditionally masculine things. 
I'm progressive as shit, and I'm usually an unfailing optimist. I like the pastel colors and painterly rotating textures of the world. I enjoy the cute outline shadows have, and enjoy seeing a new character to talk to, and then getting to see the fantastic art they get in the menu. I f***ing love wiggling the animals while holding them, or putting them on my head and watching them wobble like jello. The way they spin as I rotate them, or as I tease the animals with a toy is great. The variety of spells is so freeing, as is the lack of rules, and while I won't spoil the last third of the game here, it can get really crazy. Some of the furniture is stuff I'd love to have in real life. I think my character is cute and the character designer is fun. Riding a giant sparkly spectral calico cat while I have time stopped and I'm covered in rainbow bunnies so that I can restart the owl club? Shit's peak game design. Hoot hoot. Who needs gripping human stories about loss, clever environmental design, and invincibility frames when I can be a cat, riding a cat, holding a cat, and letting another cat sit on top of my head with a crow in a cat hat following behind? When I can help cat construction workers with their bagel deficiency and then watch them waddle all the way back to the cafe? When I can for once in this godforsaken world imagine that a corporate CEO would acknowledge that their wealth could and should be used to better a community that just wants to go back to the beach, but is blocked by an infestation of poisonous flowers. Sounds like I'm half joking, but I'm really not. I don't care whether Calico was technically mind-numbing in a way, because in the ways that mattered to me, it absolutely was anything but. I could talk about how there's an update that reworks the baking systems, adds minigames, adds new animals, etc. And I am excited for that. This game is special and is competently made. I don't want to suggest that it's bad when looked at on a technical level. Just like any game has faults and it has things that make it interesting and special. I am obsessively interested in traditional game design and game balance and talking about games on a deeper, more intricate technical level. I really am, which is why I've been making content about it on YouTube for over 8 years now. The anniversary was on the 3rd, by the way. Hashtag small channel struggle. It's just like, life's too short to want to dissect absolutely everything. I don't often delve into critique with the goal of being a buyer's guide. So what use would there be in me detailing what is and isn't functionally sound in this game, or what aspects of it might contain the hallmarks of subpar design? Calico's too simple and so clearly a game that's designed for the specific niche audience it wants to find. It was never out to get Game of the Year awards and sell 10 million copies, though I'm sure that would have been nice, of course. This is obviously a passion project that the developers wanted to share with those who can derive value from it, and that's presumably it, you know? So if I'm not the type of critic to help you decide whether or not it's worth your money, why would I step on the game's passions, goals, and intents instead of just gush about the fact that I like it? In my experience, it rarely makes good video material to just gush like that, all sugar and no nutrition. As such, I don't really do it, but this video is an exception because I want it to be. I can take the critic hat off too, as we all should every once in a while. How long is this video? 5 minutes? 7? From a channel that rarely even makes videos shorter than 20 minutes and has been known to make stuff that's nearly 3 hours or even almost 5? But why belabor the point beyond what's necessary? I enjoyed Calico, and others seem to as well. That makes me happy, because I expected a lot of dudes that feel inadequate to try and tear it apart for clout. I'm glad I didn't find that. People seem to get it, even if it's not for them. And if people don't enjoy it, that's okay too. But also, I don't care. Life doesn't last forever. Forging forward and making the world a better place, or contributing something that makes you feel accomplished and entertains or helps others can be very valuable. But don't forget to enjoy life along the way too, yeah? Sometimes you've just gotta turn it off and be whatever that means to you. So play a game you wanna play today, and maybe tell someone close that you love them. Starting your day off on the right foot is only one step away after all. Enjoy your week, everyone.